Hello friends, this video on NEAT Ecology is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we often heard of the term red data book when we talk about uh, conservation of biodiversity. So what is red data book? This is basically a catalog of threatened plants and animals which are facing risk of extinction. So this concept of red data book was introduced in the year of 1963 by IUCN. So IUCN stands for International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. This is however the name IUCN is now replaced with WCU that is World Conservation Union. So World Conservation Union is the uh, is, is the uh, main body which initiated this concept of red data book in 1963. Now how this helps? So in this red data book you have list of all plant and animal species which are facing extinction. Now certain species are at the higher risk of extinction, certain species are at lower risk of extinction. So now when you know those levels of extinction you can take actions accordingly to prevent that particular species from extinction. Now there are various categories of species. What are these categories like threatened species? So under threatened species you again have some subcategories like endangered, vulnerable, critically endangered, lower risk, rare, intermediate, out of danger. So all of these subcategories fall under the threatened category. You have another category called extinct which have already become extinct. One is extinct and wild, one is data deficient and not evaluated. So these are now for everything you see you have a short form like threatened you have T, for extinct you have EX, for extinct and wild you have EW, data deficient you have DD, not evaluated you have NE and so on. So these terms like for every species you would have a category attached to it. So if a species has become extinct so then there is no point taking any steps for them because they have already become extinct. If there is a species which is threatened, now under threatened, what is the level of its threatening? Like whether it is critically endangered or it is endangered or it is vulnerable. So looking at that category, you decide what steps need to be taken for that particular species. Now let us talk about the threatened species. So these are the species that can become extinct if not provided with proper food, habitat and protection. So if you do not care properly, there is a possibility that these species might become extinct. Now the thre threatened species are recorded in the pink pages of the red data book. So inside the red data book you have pink pages which uh, lists down the threatened species and you also have the green pages which lists down the species which have recovered from the threatened uh, category. Like maybe a particular species is threatened right now but later if it is no more threatened because if, if that species is able to reproduce properly and its population is gradually increasing so in that case it might get come out of the threatened category so then it will be listed in the green page so you have this pink pages and green pages inside the red data book now following categories fall under threatened species, endangered, vulnerable, critically endangered and lower risk. So we will talk about each of these four categories in more detail now. So let's talk about the endangered species. So endangered is often denoted by E or EN. So these species experience high risk of extinction in the wild. So such species have 20% probability of extinction. So these species have 20% possibility of extinction in the next 20 years. So 20% probability of becoming extinct in next 20 years. So you understand that? So this uh, actually measures its uh, risk of extinction. That is how much risk it has of becoming extinct. Now if you talk about uh, different groups of animals you would see that almost 22% of the amphibians and reptiles are endangered. Some 19% of the mammals and angiosperms are also threatened. Right. So uh, examples of endangered species are sloth beard, rhinoceros, snow leopard, great Indian bastard, blue whale, Indian aconite. So these are all examples of endangered species. So this is the great Indian bastard. So this is a bird. This is how it looks. 
this is the blue whale, this is the white leopard, this is the rhinoceros. So these are all examples of endangered species. So their numbers are already less and looking at the way their numbers are decreasing, it is calculated that there in next 20 years, there is 20% probability that their species might become totally extinct. Now let's move on to the next category which is critically endangered species. So critically endangered means they are, they are at a more critical level. So species experiencing very high risk of extinction in the wild and can become ex extinct anytime in near future. So that means I mean, the, the probability of becoming extinct is very high. Anytime they can become extinct or in terms of uh, measurable numbers, we can say that there is a 50% probability that they will become extinct in the next 10 years. So it, it, the probability percentage is also very high and the number of years in which they will become extinct, that is also very less. Like in case of endangered species, it was 20% probability in 20 years. Now it is 50% probability in just 10 years. That means within 10 years itself, there is a high possibility that these species will become extinct. And you will be surprised to know that worldwide, there are 925 plants and 1014 animals which are critically endangered. So 925 plants and 1014 animals are critically endangered worldwide. So some of the examples of critically endangered species are pygmy hawk, Barbaris nilgiriensis. So th this Barbaris nilgiriensis is again a species of plant which is uh, found near the nilgiris and that is why the name. Moving on to the next category is vulnerable species which is denoted by a capital V. So these are species which are undergoing depletion and thus facing risk of extinction in medium term future. So even though there is uh, no possibility of extinction in the near future but, but what we can see is that their total population is gradually reducing. So that means the species is undergoing depletion, the numbers are gradually decreasing. So these vulnerable species are also known as depleted species because their numbers are gradually reducing or depleting. Now in terms of numbers again for these species there is a 10% probability that these species may become extinct in the next 100 years. So this shows that you know they, do not, they are not at a very high risk of extinction. Only 10% probability in next 100 years. So 100 years is a long time and only 10% probability. So that's like quite better than critically endangered and endangered species. So uh, what has been found is around 34 to 51% of the threatened species are vulnerable. That means almost half of the threatened species are vul vulnerable. So some of the examples of vulnerable species are black bug, Indian gazelle, Cupressus cashmeriana, cheetah. So these are all examples of vulnerable species which might not become extinct immediately. But yes, there are chances of their extinction in midterm future. Then we come to the lower risk species. The name itself says that the risk is quite low for these species. So such species face lower risk of extinction in future. However, need some attention to continue to flourish. Now, since they are under the threatened category, that means that there is a threat for their extinction, but the risk is quite less. So when compared to critically endangered, endangered or even vulnerable, their risk of extinction is comparatively lesser. Now lower risk species are also called near threatened species. So they are also abbreviated as NT, that is near threatened. So near threatened and lower risks are like synonymous. So in India, we have around 109 animals and 73 plant species which are near threatened. So these many plants and animals in India are near threatened or lower risk. So one of the examples is the mountain beaver as you see here on the screen. So this is also a lower risk species. Now the moment all, so basically all the plant and animal species which has been categorized under threatened species, whether it is vulnerable or lower risk or critically endangered or endangered, all of them need some attention. 
either more attention and less attention but they need attention so at any cost we do not want their numbers to reduce drastically so either their numbers should continue to increase or they should remain maintained thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you